Hi, welcome. This is uh, Lars Nelson. I want to share how my physics students and my astronomy students have been using the Chromebooks at Taiwan Park High School. Um, on my website, a few links that the students use, the calendar as well, but um, at the end of the last few labs on the right side here, students have been entering data. For example, um, Hang Time Lab. Once the students collect data, they can uh, enter values related to their uh, vertical leap, hang time, reaction time. Um, I can organize that data very simply for the whole class to look at trends, and then I can put in formulas to calculate ideal values to compare their values to. This takes less than 10 minutes, which is fantastic. Um, last week, we spent a lot of time on whether the mass affected the rate at which objects accelerate due to gravity in groups. Uh, this is a group lab, so you have uh, large groups of students uh, entering their data and um, over 200 trials worth of data because they did multiple trials with averages. The entire class averages showed that uh, when you double and triple mass, the average rate of acceleration down an incline remained constant, which was very uh, convincing for students who weren't so convinced. Um, another lab we just did uh, yesterday talking about uh, Newton's second law, looking for a, a trend in the relationship between the amount of mass um, and the force applied on an object showing that uh, as you increase the mass of an object, the, uh, the force measurements, forces in Newton's decreases. They saw that inverse trend, whereas when you increase the force on an object, the more force you apply, the greater the acceleration. Um, this is great to do. So with the last five or 10 minutes of lab, students can uh, evaluate their data and compare it to the class to see if there are general trends or if they actually did something right or wrong or if there's a minor calculation. Many times students discover um, the trends uh, fit their trend, uh, gives them a little more confidence. Other times they find that uh, they made a simple calculation error and by looking at the trends, they can correct that. Some of my uh, astronomy students um, spend quite a bit of time using these uh, simulators. So uh, this is just a, a simple example of um, labs that the students would do in my class. There's a bunch of animation students uh, uh, manipulate with a uh, various slider bars and values to discover Ptolemaic models, Copernican models, um, historically, uh, planetary orbits. And um, Chromebooks allow a nice, quick, easy way for students to come in, uh, evaluate relationships, and um, sit down at a desk with a small little computer and a short boot up time and uh, can get involved in nice classroom discussions because we can all see these things immediately. This is a, a really nice useful tool. These are all the simulated links my students use here on the left. On the right are some surveys that students uh, will take. Typically when I evaluate the surveys um, I can, when students enter responses to my questions, I, uh, I can share those. So, uh, for example, matter of five minutes, students can answer a handful of questions and then I could generate a spreadsheet to see what those general responses are. Sometimes uh, students enter those, res those uh, responses to this question and instead once they're done entering the responses, I click this little response button and show a summary. And uh, we can have a little uh, Q&A session to talk about, well, why, why did, why did, you know, 59% of the students feel this way? Um, what was the common misconception with this question as it organizes the values? And the pie charts allow me with the LCD projector to project these responses to talk to students about it. So, We've got a nice glimpse of how I use surveys, forms, spreadsheets, labs with um, all of my astronomy and physics students. Uh, thanks for taking the time to listen to this.